Hey, Way family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you, so go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless. There was a day, and some of you have heard this story, that I was struggling with an area in my life, and the area was jealousy. And this was right before, this was before me and Lisa got married, and my I, I was pouring out my jealousy on Lisa. I would go over scenarios of past relationships over and over and over. Ask stupid questions. Did you love that other guy? And there was no right answer she could give me. She said no. I go, of course you're going to say no, you're lying. What else would you say? I've never loved somebody like you. Of course you're going to say that. It's to your benefit. So the conversations were really bad conversations because every conversation turned into a major interrogation. She started crying, and then I feel sorry for her a little bit. I knew when she started crying, just drop it, and I would stop right there. But once in a while, I'd even go bolder and say, I know why you're crying because you want me to stop. And you know that you're lying and you don't know what to say right now. She start crying. It was abusive. It was relentless. Relentless. I, I would never, I wouldn't stop. I would tell her, okay, I'm done until the next day. And then I would come to church and I would say something like this, God set me free from this jealousy. I don't like the person I'm becoming and I'm hurting Lisa. And then I would leave church and then I would ask her just one question. That led to another question. That led to another question. That led to another interrogation. And then she starts crying. And then once in a while I break up with her. It was a mess. And it was going on for months. And then I would come back to church and say, I'm sorry. And then go back and ask another question. And then one day, and this is going to get to the first point on how to unlock. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get you to that point right now. How to unlock or get access to heaven. One day I was in a real estate class, not a church. And God could reach you anywhere. I was in a real estate class. And then I started like dozing off in a sense, not even paying attention to the professor. And I just started daydreaming. I wasn't daydreaming really. I began to talk to God. And as I began to talk to God, the Holy Spirit would bring up, hey, you got a jealous issue. And when he brought up the issue, this is what I told God. I go, I know I have a jealous issue. Why haven't you set me free? Because your word, I was saying the word to him, your word says who the son sets free is free indeed. And I'm still in bondage. And I already went up to the altar a whole bunch of times and I'm still not free. What's the problem? And then the Holy Spirit answered me in the tone I was speaking to him. And he says, am I the problem or are you the problem? And then at least I was in the right mind to say this. You're never the problem, Lord. I'm the problem. He goes, okay then, let's begin to get change. And the first key, and I'm going to give it to you right now, the first key to unlock the kingdom of heaven, what's there and getting it to manifest here is this, repentance. Step number one, repent. What's stopping us from receiving from God is our present thinking. Until we change our thinking, we will never change our results, lives, or emotions. In Matthew 4, 17 says this, from that time on, from that time, Jesus began to preach. Jesus just came out. I said, from what time? Jesus is beginning his ministry on earth. For some of you guys don't know, at 30 years old is when he began his ministry. There's almost 30 years of silence. We only hear about him as a baby. We get a little quick picture of him at 12 years old. And there's there's absolute silence on Jesus' life. Jesus now is ready to enter into his purpose. 
And before he enters into his purpose, he goes into the spirit of God, takes him to the wilderness to face the devil. The devil tempts him with every temptation that we face, but Jesus did not give in to one of the temptations. He overcame the temptation. And after you have resisted the devil with the word of God, he resisted the devil with the word of God. The Bible says that the devil left and the angels came and ministered to him. After that moment, this is the moment, Jesus starts his ministry. These are the first words he's ever preached. And this is what he preached. From that time on, Jesus began to preach. What he began to do? Preaching is what he was going to use to change the world. Preaching is what God is still using to change our world. We come into an atmosphere like this to hear the words of God, and these words are full of the Spirit of God, the power of God to transform your life, transform your family, transform your marriage, transform your thinking, transform your emotions. God starts everything with some preaching. That's why the enemy wants to shut down preaching. He began preaching, crying out. And I want you to think about this. He's not preaching. He is preaching. He's preaching like I'm preaching. He's preaching with authority. He's preaching with force. They were saying he's like crying out. And this is how he starts his message. And these are the first words. And he says, repent. Crying out. Repent! And he says, change is what a repent means. Change your mind for the better. Heartily amend your ways with abhorrence of your past sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's a tie here. He goes, You repent, and repentance is like a door. Say it with me. Repentance is like a what? The door was closed, and then I repent, and the door is now open. Now, when the door opens, I have now access to the kingdom. He goes, repent. If you repent, the kingdom of heaven is available. It's here. It's now. What does repent mean? Let's discuss that for just a minute. I don't know how far I'm going to get in this sermon, but I want you to get this. I want you to get this in your in your in your soul, in your thinking. You can't have access to God with wrong thinking. We need to repent of our doubts, of our fears. We need to repent of our unforgiveness. Do you know repent unforgiveness is a thought? It's a sinful thought. And what God is saying, unless you're willing to repent of your unbelief, change the way you're thinking, you can't access the kingdom. But if you would repent, the doors of the kingdom will open. It's time, this is the idea, it's time to really repent. Not repent like I was repenting. I just wanted relief from the anguish. Have you ever just said, I'm sorry, because you didn't like the way you felt, but you really didn't want to change? Have you ever said, I'm sorry, and then while you're saying you're sorry and you're repentant, you're also saying, God, if I ever do it again, I just want you to know I love you. And this is what I'm saying, that's not repentance. There has to be an abhorrence. You know what that means? I got to hate what I've been doing so I can turn away from it once and for all. I want you to get this. Repentance is turning away from a lifestyle, turning away from a way of thinking, turning away from a way of living so you could turn to another way of thinking, another way of living, another lifestyle. And the only way we're going to turn, we got to start hating sin. I not only hate sin, I hate the feelings that come with it. Right? So let's continue reading. I'm going to finish my story, how I overcame jealousy or how God helped me overcome jealousy. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let's look at the word repent. The word repent means to change one's mind for the better. 
a turning from one's sins, a turning from one's what? With a, fe- with a feeling of deep regret and remorse for doing wrong and causing pain. The repentant sinner is in the proper condition to accept the divine forgiveness and favor of God. The repentant sinner, and you know who's a sinner? You and me. Come on. We will never, ever tap into the favor, power, forgiveness of God until we finally admit, I'm wrong. We got to stop justifying our craziness. Well, the reason, the reason I do what I do, the reason, the reason I have an attitude the way I have an attitude is that you made me mad. Okay. That's not repentance. The reason I have a drinking problem, I'll tell you why. Because the thing you said the other day just took me, it was a camel. It was a straw that broke the camel's back. What scripture is that? Marco 3, 4. There's no scripture, Marco 3, 4. Let's stop justifying our craziness. Well, the reason, the reason, the reason I'm sleeping around my girlfriend because I'm only human. It's my hormones, Lord. Take those hormones away. You'll never tap in to the holiness and the freedom and the power of God justifying a sin. It's time for us to stop justifying and start repenting because once we repent, the power of God comes in and delivers us and sets us free. We can be free. There's power to set us free. We need to stop whitewashing the word. Churches right now, demonically influenced, won't talk about repentance. And repentance was Jesus' first message to gain access. No, 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 pastor, don't talk about repentance, man. Because if you talk about repentance of sin, you're going to turn people off. You just tell them how awesome they are. The Bible says that we're not awesome apart from Christ. The Bible says we're sinners. That we're off. I don't want no doctor telling me I'm okay when I'm sick. Tell me the truth so I can get better. Is there anybody here that says, come on, God, come on, pastor. Don't water down the word. Give me the whole truth of God because I want to have the whole experience of God. And whatever is holding me back, I'm willing to let it go. We want people experiencing God for real. We don't want you to join church as a club. We want you to be part of the family of God. We want you to experience the kingdom of God, the power of God, experience the Holy Spirit. But we must first repent. After we repent, we're in the condition. We're in the proper condition to accept the divine forgiveness and favor of God. Okay, so now, I go, God, how come you didn't set me free from the jealousy? Am I the problem or are you the problem? Well, I'm the problem. He goes, this is why. Because you've never truly repented. You were sorry for what you did and you were sorry for treating Lisa Wrongly, unjustly, you abused her, and you know that. You don't like the way the jealousy makes you feel, do you? No, I don't. You don't like who you're becoming. No, I don't. He goes, but there's a problem. You don't hate it enough to finally turn away from it, though. The Holy Spirit wants to develop a deep-seated, I want you to get repentance in the heart that we no longer go to that anymore and we've made up our mind, I am done. And when you're done, you get access to the full power and the full breakthrough. I don't want no partial breakthroughs. I want full breakthroughs. 
who the sun sets free is free indeed. I want total freedom. Does anybody here want some total freedom? Stop trying to wean off sin. Like what I'm going to try to do, God, is try to do a little less murdering. That sounds funny with that. But how can we laugh at that, but when it comes to lust? When it comes to lying. When it comes to compromising, we're trying to wean off of it. I'm trying to wean off. You know, we used to, you know, me and my boyfriend, we used to have sex like three times a week. We're weaning off. It's only one time a week. Lord, aren't you proud of me? <laughs> he goes, no. You're a sinner. You need to repent. I can set you free. I do, I'm the one that can give you joy and peace and satisfaction. Come to me. Stop falling for the counterfeit. Come on, church, can we handle the truth, the, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? He goes, that's why you didn't get set free, Marco, because you really don't want to get set free. He goes, do you want to get set free? I go, yes. This is what the Holy Spirit told me. He goes, okay, I'm going to set you free. I was in a real estate class. I'm going to set you free right now. Nothing happened. It wasn't like I started gyrating. Right, and I'm like, Whoa. imagine in, Cal in, 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 in Chafee College doing that kind of stuff. It didn't happen. Nothing happened. It was a conversation. I received it by faith. And then I received it by faith. I repented, I received it by faith. And then he told me this, which was very interesting. He goes, don't ever ask another jealous question again. He's the moment you ask the jealous question again, the moment you give in to that jealous question or that jealous spirit, it's all coming back and it's going to be worse than ever. You know what repentance means? We do like Jesus told the adulterous woman, go and sin no more. What he's saying is be done with it in Jesus' name. And when we're done with it, we're done, come on, we're done with the doubt. We're done with the, with the laziness. We're done with the mediocrity. We are done with the anger. We are done with the depression. We are, we just done. We are done in the name of Jesus. I've made up my mind. No more lukewarmness. No more double-minded. I'm making up my mind. I'm going to serve God. And I'm not turning back. I'm serving God. And once we say that, the kingdom of heaven is accessible. He said, everything that you need to be strong, everything you need to be, have joy, everything you need for your purpose, everything you need to overcome, I release it and I give you access to it at the point of repentance. I'm only on step one, though. That's the problem we're running into right now. See, we are here to allow God to change the way we're thinking and living. We will never access God and all of his he heavenly blessings until we align our thoughts and our lives to his. Or until we are willing to turn from our sinful ways to place our faith in Christ and live by his word. Is anybody ready to turn? Is, are we here to align our thinking to his? Soon as we do that, we get access to everything that's his. Even Willie Nelson knows this. Willie Nelson even knows this. He ain't even a Christian. 
But he said this, once you replace negative thoughts with positive ones, you'll start having positive results. Come on, Willie. Like, even he knows, like, this makes sense. He goes, once you replace your wrong thoughts with right thoughts, you'll start getting right results. Our biggest problem is not the devil. Your biggest problem is not your past. Your biggest problem is not your present struggle. Your biggest and my biggest problem is our thinking about our past, our thinking about our present struggle. Our thinking is our biggest problem. You guys get that? See, after repentance comes receiving. Say it with me. After repentance comes what? Receiving. Let's see if we see the pattern in the scripture right here in Acts 2.38. And Peter said to them, and Peter said to them, repent. Interesting that Jesus is speaking repentance and now his disciple is preaching the same message. Shouldn't we speak the same message as Jesus? Let's change the way we're thinking. Let's repent of our sins. It's time to turn away so we can turn to. It's time to open the door for God to enter our lives and gain access to everything that he has. There's a thought that's trying to keep you, a lifestyle that's trying to keep you from receiving everything that God has. Could it be just you're saying, I can't all the time? Stop saying you can't because align yourself with the word of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's stop with the negative talk. Let's stop talking ourselves out of breakthrough. Let's stop talking ourselves out of ministry. Let's stop talking ourselves, come on, out of a higher level. Let's stop talking ourselves out of being effective. And then we say, no, we can but, but how? How, 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 you can, how are you going to be able to can? With the devil talks ebonics, that's why. How, how, how that going to be? And then you got to answer the devil. You can't just let the devil speak in your life and then you repeat what he says. When he starts telling you you can't, he starts telling you you're unworthy. He starts telling you you're not good enough. He starts telling you you're a failure. And he starts reminding you of every single failure. You better say something. Because if you don't watch it, he'll convince you. He'll convince you even what, you, what you're hearing comes from God. You don't qualify. Do you remember last week when you cussed? You remember last week when... You looked at this and you shouldn't be looking at that and the way your attitude's been the last few days and you think you're going to perceive everything from God. I don't think so. I'm going to tell you, that's not God because God doesn't speak that way. That's the devil. You know what God will say? Come on, son. Let's reason it, reason together, daughter. Come on. Though your sins are red as crimson, I'll make you white as so. Come on, baby. Let's get this together because I still have a blessing for you. My past sins don't disqualify me from breakthrough, don't disqualify me from heaven. It's what I think about those past sins that might disqualify me. When God forgives me and he sets me free, I qualify for every single blessing. It's time for you to stop being walking around here condemned and in shame and full of guilt. It's time for finally you to say, God, forgive me since I've just been waiting for you to admit it. I forgive you and I give you full access to my blessing, full access to my joy, full access to my freedom this is how you preach repentance with authority we got to stop being sissy preachers you know I just I just want I know I know it's real hard and I know it's tough to swallow you know I just want to apologize what I'm ready to say but I have to tell you kind of so, you're not quite living that good. <laughs> 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 
We'll cover the next part next week, okay? <laughs> After you're done speaking with them, they don't even know what you said. They just think you're weird. It's time for us to start preaching, not condemning nobody with the love of God. And you let them know that you can change because there's a God that can set you free. He set me free. He can set you free. But are you done? Because you can never have a new life until you're done with your old life. You know what they're going to say? Thank you, man. No one ever told me the way you told me. After repentance comes receiving. Jesus' first step to making heaven accessible to all, to all was preaching a message of repentance. When we repent, it is like opening up an invisible door to the heavenly realm. Meditating on wrong thoughts will now allow us to receive right things. Meditating on wrong thoughts will not allow you to receive right things. Before you start receiving, your thinking has to be aligned with the right thoughts, and now you have a stream for acceptance. You guys get that? So the first step of God delivering his people, saving his people, he's saying, let's change the thinking. Let's get rid of all the unbelief. I'm the savior of the world. Stop saying that I'm not the Savior. Stop saying that I'm just a teacher. Stop saying that I'm just a prophet. I'm the Savior of the world. Let's get our thoughts right so I can save you. When you start thinking I'm a Savior, I'll save you. When you start believing I'm a deliverer, I'll deliver you. When you start believing I'm a healer, I'll heal you. When they start believing I'm a God of a source of breakthrough, I'll be your breakthrough. Let's get our thoughts lined up with my word. You know what the devil wants to do is get your thoughts lined up with hell. Because your thoughts are a stream. And whatever they're lined up to starts a stream into your life. No one loves me. Everybody's against me. God, I don't even know if you love me. I've been thinking about it the other day. That's not speaking in tongues. You're lining yourself with hell, uh, up with hell. And now you got a stream. I want you to get this. You'll start getting a stream, an overflow flood of, of rejection in your life. So the enemy knows I just need them to line their thinking up with mine. If I can line their thinking up with mine, I got access to their whole life. And God's saying, if I could just get their thinking aligned with mine, they'll have access to everything that I have for them. They'll have access to the breakthrough. They'll have access to the provision. They'll have access to the riches. They'll have access to the power. Jesus was a great example of someone walking with full access. Jesus had full access because his thoughts were always 100% aligned with heaven. You guys get that? I'm trying to help somebody here. Repent. Look what he says. Peter now saying repent. And Peter said, and Peter what? And Peter what? You can never be saved without this first word, repent. I got to be willing to be done. I'm done. You can't get right with God and not repent of your adultery. How? Lord, I really like her though. And you said to love my neighbor as I love myself. And we've been doing a lot of loving. <laughs> Come on, how many know we'll justify crazy stuff? Before you know, you start finding scriptures to justify your craziness. Right? Say, honey, God understands. Because I really believe, how could something be so bad when it feels so good? That's what I was thinking. 
And what I was thinking is that God brought us together. Wasn't it a miracle? We were in the same room, and then I caught eye contact with you. You saw me, and we, it was like love at first sight. Do you remember the tinglys? <laughs> and then we got confirmation. Remember that bar? Our favorite song came on. Always and forever, and it was your favorite song, my favorite song. And then we start slow dancing. Remember that? The confirmation. <laughs> Crazy. Hell is ready to invade your life. It's time. God is warning you right now. It's time to repent of the sin. And God is saying, if you repent, I'll forgive you. I'll set you free. Then I'll take you to a place you've always wanted to be. I'm a God, and I got a great plan for you. And I'm giving you heaven, and you can have it on earth. Stop settling for less. Repent and be baptized. And every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive, say it with me, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent and you will receive. Repent. You got to see this is a sentence. That's the first part. Repent is the first part. The second part, and you will receive. He goes, repent. See, the enemy doesn't want you to repent because he doesn't want you to receive everything you've been looking for. Because the truth is, every you've been looking for is in God. The peace you've been looking for is in God. The freedom you've been looking for in God. The purpose you've been looking for is in God. And the enemy says, no, don't repent. because I just want to keep you going. Stop going with the devil. He's destroying you. He's depressing you. He's filling with you with anxiety. Come on. He now has you addicted. He makes you want to feel like killing yourself. And God is saying, aren't you done with that life? It's not gotten you anywhere. Why don't you just go ahead and break up with the devil. Break up with your sin. And get connected with me. And I'll give you heaven here on on earth, I'll give you full access to my spirit. There's no high like a Holy Ghost high. Come on. Is this true? Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Ain't, ain't nothing. You know what, Jesus, what the word of God says? He says, don't be drunk with wine but be drunk in the spirit. He goes, the high that you were trying to get is a fake high. It leaves you addicted. It leaves you with cirrhosis of the liver. It leaves you with a, come on, with an overdose. It leaves you, come on, with a, with a hangover. It may leaves you crazy, but this high that I'm going to give you, it will take you higher than you've ever been and it's satisfied. There is no hangover. Come on, it takes you higher every single time. It's a real I'm not preaching from lack of experience. I'm preaching. So man, I, why are you preaching such fire? Because there's fire in me. This is not storytelling time. Let me tell you a story. There was months a man, you better think twice if you're not of your knife. This is not about Santa Claus. This is about no Easter bunny or Pinocchio. This is not about no Superman and Batman and the Joker. This is not about an X-Men. This is about God, the creator of the heavens and earth. The one is the source of eternal life. The one, come on, that has the keys to set you free and he's here right now and he wants to give you the life that you've been looking for and he's saying, if you're just willing to let go of that life, you can have this life. Repent and be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Man, imagine that. You know what the Holy, what, what the Holy Spirit is? It's God. It's God's Spirit. That you could come in here empty, hurting, broken, lost, in a cycle of failure. 
No one in your family ever got out. They're still in the same mess. You found yourself going lower than you ever thought you would go. You found yourself in places you never imagined you would be. And those losses that you've experienced because of the bad decisions, loss of families, loss of friends, loss of your joy, your peace, your dreams, your dignity, your purpose. So much regret. And you're sitting here in this room. And God loves you so much that he gives you a message that you can have a new life. That you could begin to experience a little heaven on earth. That what's available there is available here to you right now. Your life can totally be transformed in this moment. And he's saying if you would repent and be willing to give up your old life, willing to give up the anger, willing to give up the lifestyle, God is saying, I will give you a gift. And I'm not going to give you a thing. I'm going to give you my spirit. And when my spirit comes inside of you, you're going to be made a brand new person with new desires, new emotions, and a new power to live a life that you've always wanted to live. You're going to be able to, you're going to be able to walk on water and not drown. You know what that means? That what used to drown you and intimidate you will no longer drown you and intimidate you because you're going to have the spirit of God. And now you're going to be able to say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The God that's in me is bigger than my problems. The God that's in me that's bigger, is bigger than the abuse. The God that's in me is bigger than the fear. The God that's in me is bigger than my addiction. The God that's in me that's, is bigger than my broken heart. My God, my God can help me. And it's that spirit, that same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead will come inside of you and resurrect you out of your hopeless situation. We serve a God that's willing to invade your life, invade your family if you're willing to repent. God is not against you. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel and share, subscribe to thewayworldoutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.